Greetings, I the War Owl greets you, and in the wake of the ESEA botnet Bitcoin scandal, Valve has released a new update, and it's pretty awesome. The biggest news from this is that Valve has listened, finally, to the community and implemented two flashbangs in matchmaking for competitive mode. This was something I personally suggested, and it's one of my three current check marks for how to make competitive matchmaking a success. I started out with a whole bunch of check marks. They've been, I've been checking them off down and down and down. We're down to two now. Now with the release of Operation Payback, the framework is set up to address another one. So at, there's add two flashbangs, that's one. Check, done. Competitive maps for competitive mode. Uh, that's what could be coming with the Operation Payback thing. Uh, seems like it's in the works. And then there's 128 tick servers, which I will be completely honest, I am not expecting. Ma'am, when is the baby due? I'm not expecting, I'm just fat! Oh, I'm terribly sorry, ma'am. Whoa! Sorry, that was weird. Okay, so, two flashbangs, yeah. You folks who are used to one flashbang should get used to two. I'm considering writing a tutorial to help you folks out with that, how to manage your nades. Because every, but it sounded, okay. Because now everybody is playing with the same rules. Okay, next giant news, Deagle. Reduced inaccuracy. Only Valve could write a patch note like that with a blatant double negative. But honestly, it makes sense when you think about it because they have a value that they have for the guns called inaccuracy. And they're reducing it, so it makes sense, reduce inaccuracy. It's like when you're talking about acceleration. There's no such thing as deceleration. There's only acceleration in different directions because it's a vector. Cool, right? Sorry, physics aside, this deagle buff is exactly what I asked for, word for word, and I'm very excited about it. This turns the deagle into the one deag weapon, giving it a very specific role that many players will start to use. The deagle is not for firing multiple shots. It is for going for that one-hit kill around corners, and even for long distances given the damage fallout with the other weapons. The deagle is not what it used to be. It is not the super overbuff thing that it was for a week, and it's also not the useless piece of garbage it was leading up to this patch. Honestly, I tried it out, and I think they still need to reduce the inaccuracy just a little bit more, but where it is right now, I can see players using it and not overusing it. Uh, using it being like maybe one person out of every five will prefer the deagle the, for a specific role. The Mag-7 has been nerfed. I know many of you are still feeling sad about this, and you can PM me if, if, uh, if you think I can buy your love back. Total reference there, don't worry about it. It has an increased cycle time and increased cost. This will make it so folks can't 1vx with it on eco rounds, and at the same time make it less viable because of the cost. The Mag-7 definitely was the leading eco weapon for CTs, especially on maps where you could stick a CT to engage enemies at close quarters. Uh, it was being used in pro games, even instead of the M4 in certain positions. Valve wanted all their guns to be used, so they've buffed the other guns, the other eco guns, they've buffed the UMP by reducing the price and reducing the recoil angle variance. And they've buffed the MAC-10 by making it cheaper and making it fire faster. This will give the MAC-10 a similar role to what the TMP was in source for the counter-terrorists, only this is for the terrorists. Honestly, people currently use the by zone for this right now, the high fire rate, uh, the cheap weapon at close range, ownage sort of stuff. I think the UMP is gonna be more used, but the MAC-10, not so much. So that's the gun stuff. Overall, good changes. They are all steps in the right direction, even the Mag-7 nerf. People in pro matches were acing 1v5 with Mag-7s against full buying teams. Now, they can't just mow everybody down with ease. Um, they have to pop out, shoot, pull back, pop out, shoot, pull back. But it's still giving it a good roll. Okay, now this stuff is cool. It used to be when you shoot somebody in the arm, it was an arm shot, even if the arm was in front of the head or chest. Now when you shoot the arms, it does the arm shot damage, treats the arm as a wall, and then does the head shot or chest shot damage minus the penetration penalty. Really cool stuff. Now people can't manipulate the model to block shots with their arms, smashing down the bullets with their bare hands. Also, and this is also pretty cool, when you turn away from somebody, the guy leans, this has always been here, when you turn away from somebody, the guy leans forward so their head is harder to hit. People have been exploiting that. Now, you can just hit them in the back, and it will count as a chest shot plus the head shot. 
removed aim punch resulting from getting shot in the arms or legs. Fair enough, so if your shoulder is sticking out or a guy has a weird angle and can hit you in the foot, it doesn't completely screw up your aim. I like that. So getting shot in the foot now doesn't make you wrench up in agony and miss all your shots. Fixed a sound bug that resulted in ghost footsteps when taking over bots. Oh, thank goodness, you have no idea how obnoxious that was. And finally, fixed crash on exit. How vague. So all in all, great patch, good weapon changes, two flashbangs. I mean, I can check one of them off my, my uh, wish list here. My wish list is almost complete. The game is nearing perfection, guys. I am very excited. It hasn't even been one year since it came out, and it is almost there. I'm the War Owl, and I still have no closer.